Hey guys, how's it going? So hopefully my last video helped you out and helped you understand the ranking process and how that all works. Uh, another big question that I do get often is, is it worth it for my class to rank? And a lot of people mean this in terms of the rewards that they get from ranking. So in this video, we're going to talk about the different rewards that each class gets from ranking and if it's beneficial to try and take your way all the way up to rank 14 for some classes and for other classes, you only really need to go to like 8 or 10. So anyways, we're going to get right into that in this video. So let's get started. So what rank should I obtain for my class? Now some classes ranking is very beneficial and then other classes and specs, you don't really have much use for the items that you're going to receive. So while you might want to rank for a status symbol, something like that, uh, you probably won't really benefit from all the gear. Um, one thing that I will note though is when Battlegrounds come out, if you are a class that a lot of players won't rank with, um, you're going to be able to find uh, PvP pre-made groups much easier. If you're somewhat, someone, say, like a warrior or a rogue, you're going to have to fight hard for your spots because a lot of warriors and a lot of rogues are going to want to be ranking. However, if you're, say, a paladin, a priest, um, and even maybe a druid in a lot of senses, you're not going to have as much trouble finding a group because a lot of those classes don't care about the PvP items quite as much. And one thing that I will state is that a lot of people think that ranking in Battlegrounds or ranking out in the world is going to require you to play, uh, you know, 18 hours a day, seven days a week. Um, but this really isn't the case unless uh, you're on a crazy server and, you know, ranking slots are very, very contested. Um, but even then, you don't need to get a bracket one slot to be able to rank. There's a lot of people that rank casually all the way up to say rank eight or nine and they play only a few hours a day. So it is definitely possible to do that. It's just gonna be a little bit slower. So first off, I would suggest that every single person out there, regardless of how much you PVP, you try and, tr try and reach at least rank three. Now this is super easy. You barely have to play at all and almost requires no work. Um, the great thing about reaching rank 3 is you've unlocked your class PvP trinket at rank 2, and then you get the 10% vendor reduction for being sergeant, which is rank 3. So getting rank 3 is just kind of a standard across all classes. Um, you can do this even at low levels, so ranking to rank 3 at 60 is uh, very, very easy. So. At rank 7, we get our 2-piece of our blue PvP set. At rank 8, we get our 4-piece of our blue set for PvP. And then at rank 10, we get our 6-piece. So just keep that in mind. And then at rank 9, we get our battle standard, which is very helpful for PvP situations. Rank 11, we get our epic PvP mount, which a lot of people um, would like to get, obviously. It's kind of a status symbol. Uh, rank 12, we get our three piece of the epic PvP set. And then at rank 13, we get our six piece of the epic PvP set. Now, rank 14 is where you get all of your different weapons um, that can be unlocked for getting High Warlord or Grand Marshal. So that is what is available at rank 14. Two things to note with the PvP gear. Each class has only one single set. I know a lot of you are used to the different expansions of WoW where you have options for your different specs. For example, a Druid would have a Feral gear set, a Balance gear set option, and then also a Restoration gear set option. But in Classic WoW, every single class only has one option when it comes to PvP gear, and all of those options are tailored for an offensive spec so it's always your damage dealing specs that are getting those um, pieces so you're not getting any uh, healing gear from ranking the second thing to note is that there's no resilience or specific pvp stat this means that pvp gear is not mandatory and in some situations your tier gear or dungeon blues that you actually have now will be better than pieces that you could get from ranking so this is really why uh, those kind of things come into question when it comes down to whether you should rank or not so we know that gearing in classic can be kind of weird you'll have pieces of dungeon blue sets 
or um, just random weapons that are much better than items that you could get in uh, say a raid environment or in a PvP environment but some of the pieces in the PvP sets are amazing while others are kind of lackluster and we're going to talk about those so let's just get right into all the rank gear first off just kind of quickly going over every single class uh, the amazing sets are going to be for rogues and warriors um, not only the sets but obviously the weapons so strong set pieces are going to be for hunters and mages and then middle of the road pvp gear is going to be for warlocks it's going to be very beneficial obviously in a pvp environment but you won't really be using much of those pieces in pve now the spec specific gear would then come down to druid paladin shaman and priest and i'm going to get into why those are spec specific but just kind of obvious um, example would be if you're a holy priest uh, the pvp gear for priests is going to be for shadow priests so it's not going to benefit you very much as a holy priest and you'd be much better off pvping in say tier two when battlegrounds come out so when we talk about amazing pvp gear it's going to come down to the warriors and the rogue set now the weapons are really what is so beneficial for warriors and rogues but the pvp gear is also really really strong it has a lot of stamina which is going to increase your health pool as a warrior and a rogue which is very important for survivability and then also gives you a lot of crit agility strength all that stuff that you want for a good amount of attack power and critical damage obviously so let's talk about the warrior set um, not only is the set bonus is great you have a reduction in your cooldown for intercept by five seconds which is super strong every single piece of gear has the exact stats that you want strength and stamina and then some of the pieces have crit chance on it as well the gloves also are really strong it the equip is that your hamstring rage cost is reduced by three now you can also get a necklace from zulgrub later on in phase three that reduces your hamstring rage cost by two so you can effectively get your hamstring reduced by five rage if you have both of those pieces on and in pvp this is a huge um, deal and it's all obviously very very strong as a warrior uh, so that is why warrior set is so strong obviously like i said the pvp weapons are going to be very very impactful for warriors as well so now let's talk about the rogue gear the rogue gear is very strong um, it's not quite as strong as the warrior stuff but it is very very good uh, I will say that rogues do benefit from a lot of their tier gear as well. So if you're a rogue and you're already, uh, you know, in a good guild and you are doing a lot of um, clears of, of these raids and you're getting a lot of tier gear, um, you can do fine with all of that gear as well. You don't necessarily need to rank. Where ranking comes in handy for the rogues, obviously, is the weapons are great. Uh, and then some of the pieces are really strong. I will say though that if you're a rogue and you're only going to be able to manage to get up to the blue set uh, with the time that you can put into the game, it's probably not as beneficial because your tier gear is very strong. Um, that being said, the rogues do have some interesting pieces. So your equip bonus for the rogues boots is that it increases the duration of your sprint ability by three seconds. Now this obviously is very strong. Um, it's not quite as strong as some other classes um, bonuses, but I do think it is good uh, Your four piece bonus to your gear is that it reduces the cooldown of your gouge by one second Which obviously is really nice now the interesting thing is that a lot of this uh, gear has stamina and a very healthy amount of stamina as well so if you are lacking in the health department from your you know tier gear then you will make up for it with uh, some of these PvP pieces so now let's talk about hunter so hunter is in the same situation kind of that you find uh, warriors and rogues their PvP gear gives them a lot of the good stats that they want however one thing that I will say is that their their tier gear from uh, raids is also very very strong however the one piece that all hunters will want to try and accomplish is getting their gloves and their just overall their two set bonus so the gloves for hunters is the equip increases your damage done by your multi shot by four percent this is really really big and then you also have 
um, you know, your two set bonus is 20 additional agility. So this is very strong for hunters. And if you manage to get to rank 12, you can pick up, you know, both of these pieces and get your two piece bonus and also your gloves, which your gloves, I believe, um, they're just going to be the best that you can use um, for the remainder of the game. That uh, multi-shot damage increase is just really, really big. So hunters, uh, you definitely want to rank if you're taking things to, uh, you know, min-maxing and doing every little bit you can. Um, but overall, if you are just more of a casual player and you raid and you have the tier gear pieces, um, those pieces will do you fine in PvP as well. Um, now we're going to move on to Mage, and Mage is really in a similar situation as Hunter's. Your two-piece bonus increases the damage and healing done by your magical spells and effects by 23. Obviously very, very strong, and at the same time, when you pick up the boots, you also get an improved chance to hit with spells by 1%. So both of those, um, that two-piece set bonus and those boots... Um, the equip bonus is very, very nice for mages, and a lot of mages will want to rank to at least rank 8. Um, now, this is very obviously pretty easy to do and not a huge deal, um, and that will enable you to pick up those items. Again, same thing with uh, the other classes. You're going to get a lot of stamina from the mage gear, so that will help you out in PvP also. Uh, the four-piece set reduces your cooldown of blink by 1.5 seconds, and your gloves gives you more damage absorbed by your magic shield. Uh, so both of those things are nice in a PvP sense, um, but you don't necessarily need your PvP gear to be successful if you raid a lot and you have your tier pieces. Again, those will do you uh, quite well in PvP. Um, and the only thing that you'll really see as a big difference from having the PvP set is that it increases your health pool um, by a good amount. Moving on to Warlock, this is the first class um, that we're going to come across that is really dependent on if you PvP or not. Um, the other classes, you have some really good uh, additions to your gear, whether you only PvE or if you do a little bit of PvP here and there. Now, the Warlock set is the first set that I would say is more heavily focused towards PvP. It's not going to give you much um, additional help in a PvE sense, as you're going to have a lot of other pieces that you've received from dungeons crafting and from you know doing Molten Core and into Blackwing Lair that are going to be more beneficial in a raiding environment and in a dungeon environment. Um, so the PvP set for Warlocks here it's really only going to help you out in a PvP sense. So that's why I'd kind of rate Warlock's gear as kind of middle of the road. Um, the other sets obviously help a lot in PvE as well, whereas now you're getting to the Warlock set and it's really more focused towards PvP. You have a lot of stamina, you have a good amount of spell power, but um, nothing crazy. And also your all the equips and all of your um, set bonuses are going to help you out mainly in a PvP environment. For example, the gloves um, give you a 50% uh, 50 chance to avoid any kind of interruption caused by damage while casting Searing Pain. Obviously, Searing Pain is not going to be used in a PvE environment. And then your four-piece is reduces the cast time of your Immolate spell by two se or 0.2 seconds, which, again, this is going to be used mainly in a uh, PvP sense because most of the time you're not going to be casting Immolate in a PvE environment. Um, but overall, Warlock set, very solid, especially if you are a big PvPer. It's going to help you out a lot with that increased health pool, and obviously the Warlock sets just look really awesome anyways. So now this means that we're moving on to all of our quote-unquote hybrid classes. Now, the one set that I'm going to talk about first is obviously the priest set. So priests don't benefit from any kind of healing gear in PvP, like we said. So all of the gear that you get from PvP is going to give you damage and healing, um, and it's all going to be catered towards more of a shadow build. So if you're a shadow priest... 
uh, and maybe you heal in raids, this gear set is really, really strong. It has all of the stats you want. It has MP5 on some of the pieces. Uh, it has a lot of damage and healing. It's a really strong set, and it's going to take um, your, you know, class to the next level when it comes to a PvP sense. I will say, though, if you, again, are just a casual PvPer, ranking is really not worth it, especially if you're in a good PvE guild, because you're eventually going to get a lot of those shadow damage off, off pieces that no other class is going to need when you're running Molten Core. Um, you're also going to get into the point where you get to AQ and you have your tier 2.5, which is going to benefit Shadow Priests a lot. Uh, and really, you don't need this gear unless you see yourself PvPing quite a bit. It's obviously not going to help you out when it comes to healing in PvP. So if your only concern is healing in PvP, then I wouldn't bother with getting this uh, gear set. Obviously, some priests are going to rank and they're going to do it so that they have their shadow gear that they can use when they want to go PvP by themselves and they'll still heal um, in a group sense with a lot of their tier pieces. Um, and again, a lot of people choose to rank just for kind of the um, status behind having been, you know, rank 12, 13, or 14. Um, so if you're a priest and, you know, you've really set your sights on ranking, then definitely go for it, even if you plan on healing. So now let's talk about the shaman gear. Shaman gear is actually extremely interesting. And if you plan to PvP a lot as a shaman, this gear is actually really strong. Um, the one thing I will say is Blizzard did a great job of making it very strong for both elemental and enhancement, and especially for enhancement. So a lot of the gear that you're probably PvPing with as enhancement now is a little wonky. You might not have enough intellect to have a good mana pool for your shocks and all that kind of stuff, um, but you want enough attack power to be able to kill people, obviously. So Blizzard does a good job of kind of giving you the best of both worlds. In this case, you have a lot of damage and healing uh, to improve your spells. Uh, you also have a good amount of crit. And then the great thing is that a lot of the stats on it are both intellect as well as some pieces that have some strength on them as well. So this will help you out in both situations. Um, I will say this PvP set is not the greatest. Um, when it comes to getting into later gear sets of, say, tier 2.5 if you're an elemental shaman. But having um, a few of these pieces is really nice, especially because your four-piece bonus is that it improves your crit, your chance to get a critical strike with shocks by 2%, which is really good as well. Obviously, the boots increases the speed of your ghost wolf by 15%, so this is kind of nice, especially if you choose to pick up the flag ever in Warsong Gulch. But in general, it's uh, not that huge huge of a, of a deal because you still have to uh, cast your ghost wolf. And the next set we'll talk about is the paladin set. So the paladin set is pretty good I think. I obviously don't know that much about paladins but it is strong if you're going to be playing ret. I know that for a fact. Um, again it's going to give you a good amount of strength and stamina which is nice for ret but then you still have some good pieces that have intellect and you have the damage and healing that a lot of these pieces have as well. Um, four piece set is reduces the cooldown of your hammer of justice by 10 seconds. And now that is really strong, I will say. And then also your equip on gloves is increases the holy damage of your judgment of crusader by 20. So overall paladins do benefit quite a bit from their PVP set. Um, but again, if you're a holy pally and you like to heal in PVP, this gear is not going to be as uh, impactful for you personally, um, but again, you're going to be able to get into groups a lot easier than, say, a rogue or a warrior because not as many paladins are trying to get this gear. And last, we have druids. So the druids PvP gear, uh, again, is somewhat similar to shamans. They did a good job uh, with these pieces, giving a lot of different stats so that it benefits you in you know, a cat form DPS sense uh, playing feral, but then it also benefits you as playing a more balanced hybrid moonkin build. Um, so my personal suggestion is when you get the PVP gear for druids, uh, this is when Heart of the Wild and NS, that talent build, uh, really comes to life. 
Uh, you have a lot of attack power, um, but then again, you also have a lot of damage and healing. So you can open up with bleeds as cat. You can instantly pop out, put a moon fire on, put an insect swarm, and then you can go into bear form or kite, and you're just pumping out a lot of damage at that point. So the PvP set for druids is definitely where things get uh, a lot stronger, and you start feeling, um, you know, a lot better as a druid overall. I will say that. Druid does benefit also from um, the tier gear from uh, AQ, which is 2.5, and it has a lot of similar stats. It's, it's uh, leaning a little bit more towards balance side of Druids. So if you're going to be playing a balanced Druid, I would suggest getting that gear and kind of mixing it in and out with some of these pieces. Um, but we'll talk in depth uh, about Druid gear in a different video, but I wanted to kind of go over all the classes and what it's like ranking and what you can expect to be rewarded with uh, based on what class you play. All right, now that we've talked about the different gear sets, it's time to contemplate whether it's worth the time investment. Uh, for example, if you play a holy priest in raids and your guild is up to date with all content and you're not really a huge PvPer, then the PvP set is strong for Shadow Priests uh, but it's not going to impact you enough that it's worth picking up. Uh, you know, you can get a lot of good gear from PvE that is Shadow, and again, you can get the tier 2.5 later on with AQ down the road. Um, and, you know, there's other dungeon blues that are strong enough for just your everyday PvE farming if you need a set for that. Now, with Classic WoW being a more sandbox-style MMO, you log in and you choose you know, what you want to work towards that day. And ranking to the top ranks is such a lofty goal that with these two things combined, it often means that after you reach, you know, your goal of rank 12, 13, or 14, players are really burnt out and they lack motivation to continue playing the game as, you know, one of their biggest and largest goals is out of the way and you know, they kind of are at a lack of what to do. So while people have been saying that you need to play 18 hours a day, seven days a week, 12, you know, weeks to rank, it's definitely an exaggeration. If you find yourself on a popular PvP server and you really want to take ranking seriously, um, you're probably going to have to play anywhere from 10 to 12 hours a day for five days a week. Normally people will cap before the end of the week so they can get into raids and do that kind of stuff. Um, I will say that at the start of honor systems being implemented, it's definitely going to be more chaotic, um, but you just really need to be realistic with what you want to achieve in WoW and understand that even if you, you know, only PvP casually in, you know, dungeon blues or tier gear uh, from the different raids, you can still hold your own in a lot of fights. One thing I do need to mention is that if you do plan on ranking, say up to rank 8, or you want to get your full blue set at rank 10, or even if you want to get your epic mount from the PvP rewards at rank 11, you can rank up to roughly rank 11 fairly casually. And by casually, I mean it's definitely a focus that you have and you're logging in and playing several hours a day, but it's not some crazy grind of 10 to 12 hours a day, five days a week. Um, that is really only if you want to get guaranteed a bracket one or two slot but you can rank all the way up to rank um you know nine or ten by only getting into bracket three or four each week and then that last rank of getting your mount at rank 11 you just push a little bit harder for that week um in general guys the ranking system is scary <laughs> but it's mainly just a big time commitment um and again the tier gear that you get in world of warcraft in classic is strong enough to compete with other players out there that have their high warlord gear. So I know this was a pretty long video and if you watched the entire thing, uh, kudos for you, you know about some of the other classes, but I expected a lot of people probably just skipped around and went to the classes that they were interested in, which is exactly kind of how I wanted to set this video up. Um, I will do a video specifically on Druid gear and go really in-depth on that because I know a lot of people are here to listen specifically about Druids. 
Um, I hope you guys now from these two videos kind of know if you want to pursue ranking and then also you kind of know how the ranking system is set up and works. If you guys have any other questions, definitely hit me up in the comment section. I do read all my comments. I know I'm not as great about responding to all my comments as I used to be. Um, however, I do try and get to them. Uh, that being said, guys, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.